Welcome to Sam's Antique Motors. Sam Wilson here. Today uh, kicks off a new project. I know many of the hundreds of followers I have have been uh, watching as we wrapped up the uh, 1972 Chevy Highlander. Uh, this new project is a 1959 Napco Chevrolet. It's a Apache 3800 one-ton truck, which uh, pretty much means it drives like a tank. Pretty much start off in third gear, first gear, and even second gear are significant granny gears. Uh, this truck was offered in 59. For those of you that don't know what a Napco truck is, uh, in the 50s, if you wanted a four-wheel drive, Chevrolet GMC didn't make a four-wheel drive. So you bought a Chevrolet GMC truck from Chevrolet and then took it to Napco where they dropped all the suspension out and put in a four-wheel drive system. In the 60s, uh, I think 1960, GMC Chevrolet figured out that was a good idea and started offering it internally. Napco later became uh, Dana, Dana rear ends, transmissions, etc. So, <clears throat> uh, a Napco truck is pretty rare. Um, I haven't been able to find any production numbers on these kinds of trucks, but I think it's a pretty rare deal. And rarity makes them kind of worth doing right because they're uh, rare and, and uh, subsequently expensive if they're uh, restored and put back like they're supposed to be. So this truck, we're gonna do a uh, frame off. We're gonna go ahead and do it uh, the way it ought to be. We're gonna put it back as original as we can. And it's got a little six speed, uh, six cylinder, uh, three speed, 235 straight six engine. Um, that engine has been kind of worked over, but we're gonna go through it again. It's got all the Napco running gear underneath it, including a transfer case with four uh, PTO locations. So um, we'll be taking every nut and bolt out of this truck and uh, we're gonna document the process like we did the Highlander. So should be some interesting viewing. We'll have some status reports. We'll have a few how-tos on stuff that's uh, kind of difficult that might be helpful to those restoring uh, these kinds of trucks. And uh, we'll, we'll uh, keep everybody informed as we get this thing uh, underway. It's the uh, first day of September, and nice 100-degree uh, day here in Texas. So uh, I'm going to do just a general walk around on the truck so you kind of know what it looks like. And then we're going to get it in the bay and uh, start taking it apart. All right, so this is, uh, as I said, a 59 Chevy Napco, one ton. We believe this to be a one-owner uh, truck. Guy, a truck came out of Wisconsin. It was reported to be used on a racetrack up there, hauling uh, uh, cars off the racetrack. It is a Napco. We think it's in the uh, its original color, and the color code on the door is a 710A, which is tartan turquoise, which is what this truck is uh, sitting in now. All this bumper, grill, all this stuff is in Bombay uh, ivory, which is kind of just a little bit of an off-white. Uh, looks to be in really pretty good shape. There's definitely some rust on it, but uh, you can see right here we got a little rust hole. And you can see all the way through to the ground over there. We'll have to kind of do a little work on getting that fixed up, but the rest of the fascia is all in pretty good shape. Um, the bumpers were supposed to be painted on this truck. This has got a little bit of, of damage and dents here, but we can get all that taken out. Um, as we kind of walk around this thing, the, the fenders are in kind of pretty good shape. Um, not, not too many dents on this one. This one all looks pretty good. we got a little bit of rust back in here. So probably have to put a, a little patch panel in this part. The doors are in pretty good shape. It did have a spotlight, which I've already sourced a, a vintage spotlight to go in there. Like the other truck, it's had a host of mirror configurations, including this one, which is, I don't think, really the correct uh, mirror. But the doors, windows, all that kind of stuff are in, in pretty good shape. We do have some problem on the back here, and I'm not exactly sure uh, what to think about it. This door's about a half inch lax on closing. Um, yet it's pretty good shape up at the top. So I'm not, and it's in pretty good shape on the front. So I'm not sure why 
uh, this door is is out of alignment and we definitely got some rust here so this this cab corner in the back is going to have to be uh, cut out and replaced um, this is the small window truck uh, they made a, a large window and a small window kind of hard to see out of it so I think afterwards they they came back in and offered these in a bigger truck this truck when I picked it up had a flatbed on it that was uh, aftermarket someone welded on they'd done quite a bit of of chopping to make this flatbed work so i took it over to my friend sean best welder guy here in town and he used a plasma cutter and cut all the flatbed portion off in doing so this cross member that goes right across here was really badly fouled up so i went and cut on it and banged on it so we went ahead and cut that out and we're going to come back in here and fabricate this frame refabricate this frame out here another 17 inches where it's supposed to go couple other things that's happened along the way is someone's added uh, coil springs on top of leaf springs and are at least in this case beside them so the coil springs really weren't supposed to be on this truck so we're going to cut those back off like they're not supposed to be uh, I think someone is, has uh, fouled up these shock perches and this one here is actually bent considerably you can kind of see how the the rivets about to pull out of the deal and it's bent over Whereas this one looks kind of proper, but I'm not sure this this bracketry is correct. There's also supposed to be a uh, uh, auxiliary spring bracket right on top of here. Just notice that's really loose, um, and that's not there. So we're going to have to go find out uh, how to correct that. I, I found one auxiliary spring bracket on eBay, and I, I went in and purchased that one. It's a new old stock version, but I'm going to have to see if we can't source the other uh three more of them um same thing on this side have to cut the spring off the really cool thing about this truck is this winch so this winch is driven by a pto uh and it's a gar wood rent uh winch the data plate which i've taken off and i've actually had a guy laser remake that probably be the subject of another video but that that plate garwood in the 30s was kind of a famous wooden boat and it's garwood industries this is out of the winch and crane division and um i think garwood was probably quite a uh, celebrity of his day Roast, raced the big gold cup scripps engines you know 40 foot wooden runabout race boats probably quite uh, a character so I didn't really realize they made industrial equipment. That's probably where he made the money to be able to buy wooden boats like that. But this winch has been put on here. It's driven off the PTO from the Napco transfer case. Someone's really done a number, you know, fabricating up all the stuff that went with this, this flatbed. So we're going to come in here and take all this stuff off. We've already cut, used a plasma cutter to cut these welds off. We're going to take all this winch out and built fabricate a, a a nice frame to put this winch in we're going to move it about two or three inches back because it's a little bit tight on the cab as it is when we get a bed in here it's, it's not going to fit right so we're going to scoot this back and uh fabricate this up like it's kind of supposed to be cut all this stuff off this is not supposed to be on here another interesting thing about this truck is since this is a one ton it's a 135 inch wheelbase and as such the bed on it is uh a step side bed but it's a nine foot long bed which nobody makes of course so i'm um, having uh, mark hay up in oklahoma city fabricate an eight foot bed and uh, they're not going to weld the stake pockets on the front they're making for me a, a an extra bed side that i'll cut uh, 11 inches off of each end of that and extend that eight foot bed to make a nine foot bed and with that they're also custom making me the bed angles and the bed strips so we can get that all put back like it's supposed to be this side you can see a little bubbling here this uh this cab corner has also been uh, uh worked on somewhat you can see some sort of rust or at least bondo bubbling up so we're probably gonna wind up having to cut this cab corner out and replace it with a patch panel interestingly enough the doors kind of got the same problem where it sticks out a little proud and this door's got a little more uh crust on it than than the other one so this door's got a little bit of problem down here at the bottom you can see some bondo where this has been worked on and then this uh lower fender piece is 
also got a problem. It'd make a patch panel for this, so we'll probably just put a new patch in that. And it's had a little whiskey dent up here on the front, but um, unlike that Highlander, these are all single wall fenders, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem to knock that uh, back out. The, the good thing is up here on the top, this eyebrow, this is where there's a lot of rust, generally. And on this car, this truck, it, it's in pretty good shape. Um, no real rust on it. Uh, it's not, the, the drip rails are all fine around, you know, up here at the top. They're not crusty. So with that respect, that's a, that's a good thing. The windshield, and I think this is all the original window glass. You can see, I don't know if you can see it in this video or not, but it's got the, the EZI uh, marking. So we're going to want to try to for sure save all this window glass. They've got all the same date stamps on them. So that's, that's sort of a good thing. Um, not sure whether this emblem has been replaced or whether it's original. Uh, it's in really good shape if it's original. Um, I actually have no reason to believe it's not original, but other than the fact that it's just in such a good shape. And, uh, you know, this dash uh, hood piece across here, it's also in really good shape. There's a little pitting in here that's kind of standard and customarily, customary, but we'll uh, we'll get all that re-chromed, looking new. Another cool thing up at the top, you see uh, five clearance lights. I think those are fairly rare. Um, I believe they have a little chrome bezel. It's pretty rusted, but we'll get all those off and get those re-chromed. I don't believe there's supposed to be a mirror on this side. Someone had clearly put one in there a while back. We'll get that fixed. Uh, inside the truck, it's, it's pretty nice. Um, I think this door has been repainted. This is the original uh, uh, paint in here and uh, I've already got this color match we're going to replicate that it's got the original sticker on the dash indicating the you know the shift pattern has a headliner up in the top got the roof mounted mirrors uh, the seat upholstery I've already located seat upholstery this is a charcoal brick pattern with a vinyl uh, back and uh, I believe that's available SMS Fabrics can get it for me. The floor pans, we may learn something new when we get in here, but these all are pretty solid. I believe they're the original floor plan pans. Doesn't appear to be any rust. Um, but I definitely have to kind of clean up these uh, steps in here. Uh, someone put a bunch of undercoater in there that shouldn't be in there, so that's going to be a problem to get off, I imagine. But the rest of it's in pretty good shape. You can see up inside there that forward cab support you can see rust and air so we'll probably have to get under there and put a new cab support in it you can see it's got uh, the four-wheel drive napco in the floor uh shifter uh it's actually a four speed i was thinking this was a three speed but it's actually four speed on the floor all the original knobs didn't come with a radio it's got a little plate in the uh closing off the radio all the gauges work speedometer oil uh, fuel amps and, and temperature all that works horn works uh, is missing one of the uh, uh, sun visors there's a, and there's actually not a hole over here so i'm not sure if this truck came with just one sun visor or if it's missing one but we'll sort that out door shut pretty good um, come up here on the front end the uh the motor, as I said, is this is a little uh, six-cylinder. Uh, Wade put a new battery in it. Uh, we'll replace that with a proper battery. But so I want to kind of work this one over. But it does have some of the cool features. Uh, this is the 235 CI, which came standard. Got the original distributor. It's got the oil. Uh, uh, I think that's just a bypass uh, tube, vent tube there. So it's got uh, some kind of cool stuff. It's got the old uh, oil breather. I think the uh, it's missing the uh, oil filter, which I think is supposed to be bolted onto the side of the motor. But in uh, some of the stuff that Wade gave me, it's got the oil filter in that box, I believe. So we'll get that put back on. Intake manifold looks good. Starter looks good. So. One thing kind of mechanically about this engine works right now. We're going to go through everything and, and get it back like it's supposed to be. But um, 
It does have a wiring harness here that is probably in parts original. Um, some of it actually looks pretty new, so I'm not sure if, if some of it's been replaced or if uh, if it's original, but uh, it uh, it all looks pretty good. There's I don't think there's really any extra holes. There's a couple of holes in this firewall, but I suspect those are supposed to be there for grommets and wires, so we'll figure those out. All these uh, inside fender tubs uh, panels, they all look pretty good. We'll get all that pulled out and we'll uh, make sure there's any dents or scratches. We we'll get all that out and repaint those. So, um, the only thing that's really problematic for this truck is it's it's got a Champion cooling radiator. And I've put three of those in vehicles, and I think Champion makes a really good product and um, at a right price. But for this truck, we want it to be back original like it was supposed to be. So I have the original radiator and I've already pulled that out, uh, taken the core apart, carried it over to guy to replace the core, and then uh, we'll put all that back together and put the original radiator back in the in the vehicle. We go down underneath here. This is uh, this is sort of the money shot that you can see the uh, Nabco uh, front end axle, front gear case, and what's really interesting is this big ball joint on the uh on the hub i don't know that i've ever seen that before but that's pretty cool uh only real problem i have is it's supposed to have some hub caps on here and uh you don't have a hub cap so these are big eight lug rims and these are split rims so i'm not really sure uh, i know there's a lot of issues with split rims and so we're gonna have to kind of think about whether or not we put the split rims back on it or put something that's a little safer for uh, safety reasons. I don't know if I can get a, a view down underneath back up here, but on the transfer case, you can see the, uh, let's see if I can zoom in. No, nope, I can't. So up on here, you can see the uh, NAPCO transfer case badge um, and the uh, drive shafts and then the PTO takeoff locations are kind of on the back and on the side. So. Underneath it actually looks pretty good. Transmission's nice and clean. Only real problem is this, uh, these uh, front core supports. Can't really get them in the video, but so we'll have to get that fixed up. Um, but that's sort of a walk around on the truck. And uh, looks like a pretty fun project. So we'll be uh, keeping you informed as we get this truck in there and start taking it apart. Oh, and one more thing. If any of you are looking for some hose clamps, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven uh, half inch hose clamps that I'll be selling on eBay. Download the Resto Rat app today to begin managing, tracking, and documenting your restoration project.